Hello, my viewers. You are welcome to this video. This is going to be a proto structure tutorial for beginners. So it is going to be a step by step modeling, loading, analysis, and design of this structure, including the steel roofing and as well as the foundation design successfully so we are going to be starting from the building plans architectural building plans in AutoCAD and we will set it out and then convert it to the SF file bring it up to the structure and start the modeling of this structure successfully so stay tuned and help us to like the video if you have if you have been watching on this channel you have been watching our video tutorial on this channel and you have not subscribed also do well to subscribe to our channel because that is the only way you are encouraging us to bring to you more of this knowledge on this software and other civil engineering softwares thank you and let us get started at first we will open up AutoCAD in order for us to actually work on the architectural plan but before then I want to let us know that the code of practice we are going to be considering in the design of this structure is an hero code. So let's get to AutoCAD. So here in AutoCAD we have the plan for the two-story two-story building design, just like this. And here are the grid lines set out for this plan successfully okay and so this plan now we are to be converted into dsf file so after which we will import it from total structure and start the modeling of the structure so we first of all place our columns arrangement just the way you are seeing so i have already formed panels as you can see the area bounded by these columns are my panels successfully from this architectural plan and so i have layered the column as column you have to give a layer name to the column because what protest structure understand in this old drawing here is the grid lines and the column so if you don't give the column a layer name protest structure will not understand it so i layer this as column then layer this one as grids so these two objects are very important when you are exporting your 2d autocad drawing to proto structure so having set my grid lines and columns general arrangement successfully i want to be taking this to the origin of the universal coordinate system in AutoCAD so that once imported into proto structure it will also be found at this same origin of the UCS icon so for me to do that on the keyboard I will press L for line enter 0 comma 0 just like this enter and this will look at a point you can see from this line so i have to zoom 
so you can see now the point is just right the zero zero point of the x y coordinate so i'll just click anywhere right there now as you close it to the plan green line and column zero arrangement i'll get it selected successfully and i'll have to move it and on the keyboard enter i'm moving it to the origin just like this and i'll click the idea then delete this reference line so here we are set to convert this to the xf file mind you if it is in dwg file protest structure will not be able to read it okay but before we convert it i want to be letting us know that we have a cantilever here this is it out the cantilever so we should have to take note of that so we also have a sit out here but here is not a cantilever but the whole of here is a cantilever right which we are going to be incorporated into the modeling of the structure get the whole of this plan alighted just like this hit on the w on the keyboard enter and then in the right block dialog click on the three dotted provisions this will take you to directory where you can save this plan in DSF format, you can see five files of type. All right, so I'll give it a name as as two floors, just like this. I'm saving it on the desktop it's right here. So click on the save options and OK option. But before then, make sure the instruction unit is selected appropriately. All right. Because it is the same unit that AutoCAD, uh, the proto structure, is also going to be set to in order to read this plan accordingly. Okay, options right there. So that I've saved successfully to the desktop. So I will proceed, minimize the AutoCAD. At this point, I will get back to where I have the proto structure. So I want to be creating a new project. So there is a product structure interface of which as we make progress, you will get to understand how to use most of these tools to carry out modeling successfully in this program. So we have a set of tabs here that consists of a ribbons, a ribbons that consists of panels, all right? So here is a project panels, here is a quick start material settings load libraries stories so you know all of this panel consists of a ribbons which is under building setup tab okay so each of these tab has its own panels which we will be navigating through it as we make progress in the course of this uh, tutorial successfully so for me to create a new project I will head over to this file menu all right but, but before then this other panel the all of this panel is called the structural tree structural tree in this provisions you have your stories and members all right so like now we have story two up to story three right there okay we have story zero one two and three so if you expand any of this story you have the member that is content in that story all right so if i double click on story three you see it takes it up to the roof level so the roof level is serving as a story tree all right while the second floor is the story one and the first floor the second floor is the story two and the first floor is the story one right there then story zero zero is the foundations let's see all right okay so let's create a new project click on the new this provisions or you can click on this file menu so come to new project click right there as i said earlier we will be using hero code uk hero code in this project so i will give the project as a residential building design sorry that is uh, want it to be like this okay 
having selected the code practice which is the template we'll be using all right click on the ok options so this is going to create an hero code template for us just like this so with this we will now import the dsf file we save in autocad on the desktop so you come over to modeling right there sorry set out do the set out and then dsf import in this provision now you can see unit of file you have to select the unit of file right so in this case it is mm which is millimeters all right then click on the load dsf but before then you have to import you want to select your you have to select your import type is it a floor plan is it a 3d physical model is it a 3d analytical model so anything you are bringing in the options is left for you to select but in this case it is a floor plan we are importing in click on the load dsf so this will take us to desktop two floors this one is the file we saved click on the open right here so now if you check over here in the import table right there you can see we have grid column and wall so these are the members that brought structure understood in that plan so we wouldn't want a wall we only need grid and column so we leave those ones those two actives and then we proceed to click on import so this will import the plans right here click on the close options so here is the grid lines and column set out i want to be adjusting this i'll select it right click come to offset axis right click to deselect that select it again right click come to stretch axis so I'll pick it at this end point and move it upwards so as to stretch it to be at the same line with this. Okay. So at first we have our grey lines arranged in horizontal and vertical direction successfully. So these are supposed to be numbering ordinary in autocad in proto structure rather. The horizontal grey line is numbered alphabetically while the vertical grey line is numbered numerically so once you imported your grey lines like this the first thing you do you have to renumber it so that you can have a proper numbering successfully so to do that you have to get the all of the grey lines in that direction select it by click click on each property so in the axis table property you can't come over to where you have 13 supposed to be A, A13 supposed to be A, so you click in A right there. A12 supposed to be supposed to be B, so you click in B right there. A10, A11 right there is going to be C, right? Then 10 will be D, okay? 16 is going to be E. All right then 15 is going to be f and here is going to be g h all right so after which you click on closed so we now have this horizontal grid lines you know arrange alphabetically for the vertical grey lines, as I said earlier, it's supposed to be arranged and numbered numerically. This is coincided, so we have to stretch it upward, just like this. Alright, so get the whole of that selected like this, right click, property, and then this is A6, supposed to be 1. So key in 1 there, 17. Is going to be two a one right is three a two is four a three is five a five 
six right there and then you have a seven to be seven right there a eight to be eight all right a four to be nine just like this after which click on the closed right so we have set this successfully the next thing we will be considering we should know that in the structural tree now we are at story one and a default story height is three meter which we are going to be maintaining in this design all right so we start to insert the beams we start to insert the beams and we are considering a column section of so 225 by 225 so you can see our column section successfully 225 by 225 column sections so for us to insert a beam to some point we have to be referencing the AutoCAD architectural plans so that we can be able to provide our beams according to where we have walls right there in the architectural drawings but as first we navigate to the modeling tab right there pick beam all right we will be having beam 2 to 5 section by 450 just like this so we have a beam, a continuous beam running from grid line 9 to grid line 1. So you click right there, another continuous beam running from grid line G to grid line B. Alright, and then we end this at grid line 3, take it back up, downward to that columns, and from grid line 3, we take it straight to grid line 9 again and get it up on grid line 9 to this point right click to be select the command so we are still having another uh, beam along the line 3 just like this after which we have another one along the line D up to this point right we will still reference the architectural plan we have another one right there okay just like this so we also have another one just like this we have another beam on grid line 4 and then we have another beam here so this provision you see is the stair way room okay the stair room here all right so let us check the auto cut Let's minimize this. All right, so we are having everything connected successfully. We need another point here. Okay, and again, I think that is the last provisions. Okay, we needed this point. At that point, we have a green line. We have a beam on that grid line C successfully. So at this point, we proceed to inserting the reinforced concrete slab first. Okay, so close this dialog. Navigate to the model enter and then ROC members. You will have slab right there. Click on that. In the slab dialog, we have the general tab and the loads tab. Okay, and that the general tab have the labels, all right, which is the slab labels and the slab type. Click in this drop down, we have the various slab types right there. Here is the age, which is the height of the slab, or the thickness of the slab we will be considering in this project is 150 millimeters. This is a relative level. I will be also using this option subsequently. In this presentations concrete cover is 25 millimeters for slab coming over to loads we will have to select this provision so we'll be using an additional dead load for a room okay because this is a residential structure so we select room so for the imposed loads as a residential structure so a general domestic use residential communal area with limited use you can use any of these options 1.5 Kilometer per square meters for the live load. So, we will have provisions 
for roofing here yeah, all right so we place the slabs just like this we wouldn't have slab in this provision because it is for the stair room we are going to be modeling the stair right away all right so we continue to place our slab because we have another cantilever slab here so we are going to change instructions method so click on the general tab come down we see instructions beam region is the option that is why we are placing this within the region bounded by beams all right so we are going to be using other options that says we should pick axis options so instruction method is now picking axis so in this method you have to pick the four axis bounded by the particular provisions to be able to place the reinforced concrete slab successfully so we needed it to be placed in this area so select grid line three right there so you see it's coming up right there we select on this grid line b select grid line one grid line a right and then get back to grid line three to get the slab inserted successfully so the same thing we will we, be doing here but this is a core this is a core cantilever slab so we'll be changing the slab type now you may ask question why we are not changing the slab type while we are placing the slab total structure will do that automatically during analysis okay but for the cantilever slab we have to select the type of the slab, which is the slab type 12. Right there. I have selected that. You come over to cantilever right there. So you need to know the projections of the cantilever upward. So in this case, the distance from this point to this point is 1400. Just like this. And then in a cantilever, there is always a, a railing. Okay along the edge so you have to apply the railing load as the parapet load or the balustrade load we take it to be four kN right there then we pick the first point and the second point move your hand upward just like this click to insert the cantilever just like this click on the close option but before then we are going to continue placing a slab that will form the slope staircase in this tier room so come over to insertion method slab type change it to the first one right there so we have to replace a slab right away in this zero then after which we will learn how to slope it accordingly okay so we needed a, a, a slab here which is going to serve as the landing for the staircase between this point and this point so the thickness of this slab right here is going to be 175 all right so the related level is going to be minus 1500 which is half of 3000 the height of this structure all right that is the left level so i'll be using the same instruction method which is peak axis i have to clear the existing instruction point by clicking this provision then I will now start to pick for the landing. I'll pick that grid lines. Pick this one. Pick this one. I pick this one, and then I come back. I pick this to insert this slab. All right, just like this. We'll be inserting another one in these provisions that will form the slopes successfully. So we'll be using the same configurations, just like this. Okay. So. We will clear this instruction point at first and we click on this green line, this green line, all right, click on this one, click on this one and then come back to click on this to insert it just like this, all right, fine, we are inserting another provisions here for the next uh, slope stairway, so we remove this configuration is to zero, all right? We wouldn't want it to be lowered down. We want it to be at this level. We are three meter, all right? So the same section point, clear this first, and then 
pick this green line this one this one this one and this one to insert this successfully just like this okay so at this point I now click on close to close the slab right here so for us to slope this accordingly we are going to apply it what we call plane definitions it is found in the modeling tab and then you get to the two panel right here you see plane definitions right so we activate this plane definitions right so having the plane definitions we are going to be applying it to this lab and this one so we will also be using the sections method to actually apply this successfully all right so having gotten this we are applying to this lab so we pick this point this is section point pick this one this one this one and then this one okay you see it's not picking up so you have to clear this and start all again all right so for p1 label is p1 pick this d and then green line 9 and this other green line f pick this one this is a green line all right so it's been inserted successfully which is p1 so we need to insert again in this other side which is going to be p2 right here okay then we will clear this section point and we pick this as first grid line pick this one pick this this one and then come back to pick this to insert p2 right there so after having inserted this successfully we are going to be setting the we are going to be setting the point okay we have point three we have point two so we are bringing we are bringing point one and two to this point to this provisions to this provisions and then we bring we allow point three where it is so already we can now pick point two one right there take it here and update it right there pick point two take it here and update it right there just like this okay after which we will be applying the the slope of minus 1500 right there at point one and two okay so we apply that successfully click on update the same thing applicable to p1 select it right click on the properties and then at p1 we will be having point three this way so pick point one take it uh we take point one here all right update that pick point two take it here update that pick point three take it to this point update it as well just like this and then the sloppy offset is going to be 1500 point one and point two right there okay click on the update having done this click on closed all right now we want to navigate to 3d for you to navigate to 3d you will have to come over to yeah, your c plan story right click select 3d so you get this successfully so this is what we actually intended all right okay so we are sending this down all right so since we are sending this down think uh, our our instruction point for the plane definitions have to be edited successfully so we
get back to the plan and check it again the having here to be 0.3 all right 0.3 meaning meaning we are hooking here and sending these two points down okay which is not supposed to be so so you have to right click and change it okay point two point one should be here update point two should be here update then point three should be here update all right so let's check that how it works effectively navigate to the 3d Right at this point, we get to the plane right there. Plane, plane two, select it right there. Right click and then select move members to plane. Yes, options. So we are having this. So this is what we actually expected. So we are going to be editing this one as well. Please don't forget to like and subscribe. Please let us make progress. We will navigate as well to. The plane right there, plan one select, then one right click. We are going to be editing this plane successfully. Alright, so we click on the property of this plane. So we are picking point one and then we take it here. Update point two, we take it here. Update and then point three, we fix it right here. Update. Alright, then we click on the closed go to the 3d let us move the plane to axis select point p1 which is plane 1 move members to plane yes options so you have something like this okay so at this point you can see this column has moved down 1500 to the plane so you select it right click select property and then come to 3d right there Deselect the plane right there, click on the update to get it up right there, close to right there, okay? Just like this. Do not also forget that we train and teach this program to master's level, okay? Or advanced user's level. So you can contact us at Enroll successfully. Let's proceed. So at this point now we need a beam. Okay, so let's select this beam right here. And then we pick this particular point and this point to have it right here so that it, it, it supports this uh, landing successfully. We also need a beam right here to support. Sorry, that is not well placed. So what happens there? Close this as first. Like this and then delete that up. Right. Let's take the property of that beam, pick it right, and then place that successfully to support the sloopy stairway, just like this. Okay. Let's see, everything is fine now. At this point, we we get to set the stories. So let's get to edit stories so that we can really set our foundation depth. A foundation depth as well as the or relative level so select these provisions where you see stories right click you see options here to insert stories to edit stories to generate stories the same option you found once you come to building set out and then you come to stories operations you have the same option so you can use either ways to navigate what you actually intended so once you click on that once you select the story, right click and click on edit story, you have the edit story dialog. As I said earlier, the first story is 3 meters, so we are going by this, and then structural system is ROC. You have to set that successfully. Then the next thing is the foundations. We have foundation depth to be 1100. We are going to maintain this depth for a two story building, right? So here is the related story. We call this DPC. So it's going to be 400 million, 450 millimeters above the normal ground level. So just like this, so we have to assume roof as the normal story. So click right there, click on the OK options. Yes option. 
okay so having said that successfully what we need to do now is to insert stories so we are going to be inserting three stories so we have two floors plus the roof okay to make it three so we add it up click on the okay options at this point before we proceed to generate stories will be we are going to be loading this structure you know all of these beams are carrying one load which is the block work on this successfully okay so are we double click to get to the populated stories i select this beam right click to insert wall load on this which is the block unit weight on this okay on this beam in order to analyze and design this beam successfully we'll come to edit wall load right there so in this dialog wall unit weight is normally 3.47 is about 2.5 when well, once you add the thickness of plaster and painting and other finish it on it make it 3.47 right there so the story height is 3 meter and then the wall thickness is 2 to 5 so this make up to total dead load of 10.41 kilodg per meter run right so you have this let's for instance on that wall we have a window you need to click on this edit opening so in this click on add have a a window opening right there so you can adjust to window sitting 900 right there and then window height depends 1200 and then the width of the window the door depends on the architectural design you can set that up successfully click on the ok options to insert that and ok again to complete that process so you have a wall load with a window being opened just like this so you can copy this to this actually or you copy this to all of the structures successfully all right so to do that you can just right click on that and then come down to copy wall load so let this in right click and paste it right here yes options yes options we need updates we want to paste it just like this so the same thing applicable to all of this if you want to apply it successfully you can equally select all of that select the first beam right there come down hold the shift key to select the rest of the beams having all the beams selected you can right click now and then paste copy it beam load yes option so with opening you can now use no options to have it just like this so we have loaded the beam successfully with block work wall load successfully just like this so you see the slab is transparent right there so you can make it solid navigate to the with set out and then come to layers and color settings in the dialog come down to the of slab ash these provisions you can change it to these options okay and okay to have a solid slab just like this all right okay so if you want to proceed to opening windows in these provisions you can still select the beams right click and then come to edit wall load come to open window add it right there depending on your settings click on the ok options ok options to have the window there so this is just to show you how you can add your window because adding a window reduce the loading that is coming on that beam member successfully you are reducing the loading the load of this you know block work that is coming on this beam for opening these windows okay but most of the times we do design myself I do design without opening a window I call it designing for the worst condition right but you can choose to open a window on your own it's no problem okay so 
economy okay options okay options so i think that is all we can open for now but i've shown you how to do that successfully the next thing that you could have done is to age these two beams okay that you should have to navigate to the plan view of story one and then we call it inching inching provide a rigid connections of the beams and the color successfully it is normally required when you are designing an iris structure okay but for a simple structure of a two-story building of this kind if you don't inch it there is no problem because it, but inching will help you to reduce the upward push which is the upward movement displacement successfully which if you select this beam now we only inch a discontinuous uh, beam direction so this beam now going to this to the left direction is discontinuous but going to the right is continuous so if you want to inch it you are inching the side of the discontinuous which is going to the left so you select that and then come over to where you have this update beam end condition so you are taking it this is left so you select left apply it you have a engine symbol right here okay after which so that is just to show you how to inch successfully we are going to be generating these stories okay so we navigate to the 3d right there just like this so we generate this to the second floor so what we need to do, select the stories right click come to generate stories option and then select the populated story which is story one select the targeted story which is the story two and so we are generating all of these members okay alongside if should in case there is no we, we, are, we wouldn't want to have some of this member you can just uncheck them but we need them all of that in the story two level so click on the ok options and then click on the yes options so that is generated successfully click on the closed you have this okay so all of our stairs design is also being generated successfully so after you must have model the stair right here you don't need to model it again as you generate it you have it you have it generated alongside successfully just like this okay so the next point the next level is the roof level so at that level we wouldn't want the wall wood okay so we are generating all of these to the roof level so we click on the stories right there right click and then generate stories so stories story two target story story three we don't want slab right there so you have to uncheck all of these we wouldn't want crazy we need columns and beams only okay so click on the okay options to have that generated successfully click on closed so we now have this just like this so for the wall loop we are having at the root beam we have to remove that select all of that just like this all is selected right click and then come to delete wall load options this one yes options to have it deleted do the same thing here and then yes option just like this all right so having done this what we are going to be doing now is to you know model the roof our roof uh the steel roof uh, structure successfully for us to do that we'll be at 3d just like this so navigate to the model divider come over to trust see this select that pick the first point come over to be the second point just like this and then the dollar will come up in the dialog we are selecting this type of thrust and then this the pattern will be considering having selected that we will have to change the members before we come to geometry and configure it the way we want shortly so get to members tab top code we will be using 
have HCF options, then we consider 10 by 80 and by 4 for the top and bottom or select that successfully at this point we have it rotate just like this click on the ok options then for the bottom code the same profile we are going to be using 84 and then select that rotate it this other way ok options then we have the diagonal as well we use the same sections but okay let's consider a square section this one square sections of we consider a square section of uh, 70 by 70 by 3 okay okay options then for the vertical square sections 70 70 by 3 okay options right so come down see horizontal square sections 70 70 by 3 select that okay so I haven't change haven't change the trust member successfully get back to general then trust support is going to be bottom and not top okay then we will have a a left and right can deliver of one meter for clouding purpose just like this okay so after which if you come down we have apex height to be 2000 we can make it 1500 you see it has reduced this apex height successfully so we have the right ear we have the left ear so we can make provision of 400 so this is serving as a fascia okay it's going to serve as a fascia 400 is much for fascia you can use 300 right here right for fascia just like this you come down for the span length we have it to be this number so span we make it to be 8 or just make it 10 right there okay so having done that this top and bottom cord top cord left extensions we wouldn't want any other things again we are okay with these settings in these provisions click on the okay options so you have your thrust being placed just like this so we continue to place it i will still have another one this green line nine this this point keep placing it just like this okay all right so after which you decide the command you have this so we are now to place the uh the polis so you click on the polis options pick the first trust and then the last one this will open up the polis dialog successfully so you try to select that correctly successfully doesn't work you will escape to the select the command first what i used was a gate see pull lines here so you pick pull lines pick the first trust and the last one to have a pull lines just like this so the profile of the pull lines we'll be using is 100 by 50 by 10 right so the spacing is one meters all right so if you check your left cut lever we'll be having it as uh, one thousand right there then the right cut lever we have it as a one thousand as well just like this okay now which click on the OK options to have it placed just like this. All right. The next thing we will be considering is uh, this clouding. So we pick on the cloud in this one, then pick the polines to insert it successfully. In the clouding dialog, get back to the modeling right there. And then 
select clouding again click the pull lines Just click on the ok options to insert the clouding successfully just like this all right so we have model to this instant if you want to apply load to this cloud what you just have to do you can't navigate to your off loading okay and I go the loading combinations right there click on the loading generator right there we are using the loading default loading combinations successfully click on the ok options so since we have the we have enabled the default loading combinations the next thing we have to do on the structure is to get back to the building set out click on the material right there so you have to set the materials so we are having the concrete strength to be used 16 slash 20 to apply it to all and okay the diameter of our rebar before then the steel strength is going to be 410 applied to all and okay the diameter of the rebars we will be considering for column 16 diameter up to 1625 right there the object 32 click on ok for the beams we will also use 16 right there 2025 object 32 click on the ok options for the links we on check 8 and 9 and we will be using 10 and 12 right there I'm gonna check the rest of these ones just like this uncheck this click on the ok options since we already have walls in this structure we don't need the array bars editing let's come over to foundations click here and then for the foundations we have 12 we have 16 we have 20 and we have 25 right there then we have to remove 32 Click on the OK. OK again. So having done that, we need to navigate to settings to check if what we have done is in place. Come to beams because we'll be setting the parameters of the beams. Click here. We have 16 as the B minimum rebars. The maximum is 25. Right? And this is 12 maximum and 10 minimum successfully. OK? So having said that, we can now navigate to the foundations to also set the foundations right there. Alive so is stressed. In this case of this project, we use 140 km per square meters. Then the default footing format or size is going to be squared. Okay. The pad base depth at default is 400 millimeters. So for the foundations, we 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 don't use top and bottom. We only use only uh, bottoms uh, reinforcement. So we can choose twelve at first. All right. Having selected that successfully, for the soil vertical subgrade coefficients, this is. This information so you have it on the soil test report as well as this one and this. Okay, so we leave that at default for now. After which, you can also see the course of practice you use in this project in these provisions as well as the unit format. This is where you change your unit format and product structure. So, having said that. Click on the OK options. At this point, we need to save this project. Now let's go to the analysis tab, the MPD analysis. 
So we have set our concrete and materials. So come to project parameters. In the project parameters, here are the codes of parties, which is the zero codes we're using. Foundations, we have already set that to be 140. You come to the title right there, where you get the project headers made by check by and the rest of that. You can feed that in successfully. So the letter draft, you will leave it at default. The letter loading, leave it at default successfully. Click on the OK options. Then we proceed to the model options right there. Analysis options, rather. So come to the analysis and then we, we have to check the structure. Before we run analysis, so click on building model check and start the check. We have zero error, meaning there is no modeling error in this structure. Click on the close options. So at this point, we are set to carry out analysis. But before the analysis, I want to be taking you through how to add an additional slab load. So you can navigate to any floor, you need to add the slab load right there. Get to the plan view of that floor and you navigate to the modeling right there. So in the modeling uh, provisions, you will see an additional day. Uh, slab load check this building set out. Okay. Come to loadings. Okay. We have it here. Point line and area loads. Click these provisions to have the slab loads uh, dialog. Can click area loads so what is the magnitude of the load because two kilo knitting is applied on this slab maybe due to maybe due to fridge or other appliances that are more area right there so you apply that just like this this is an additional load on this slab just to show you that successfully so let's navigate to the trading at this point, I will want us to please subscribe to this channel. Please subscribe and like. Thank you. Let us proceed. We are going to be running the analysis of this structure. After which we design the members as well as the foundations of this structure successfully. So we get to the analysis tab. Before they save the project, all right. So, click on the building analysis, and then we have set all of these. Come to analysis, and then click on the building analysis right here. The proper way to analyze the product structure is to run analysis straight away without checking this. After which, you can go through bash mode to design. The members click on the building analysis so we'll give the program some few seconds to analyze so let's try through the analysis so that we can see some warning that we may have so that i can be able to explain the meaning of that to us successfully Okay, so this is one of the warning that you actually have. This warning you often have it when you have an inclined slab member, just as we have the slopey slab for the staircase. So this does not have to hurt uh, the structural uh, analysis process, but we could have be able to, you know. Uh, you will be able to uh, remove spy solver, which I will show you after this analysis how to do that. Click on the OK option. So, you see, building analysis has encountered some errors right there. Okay, so what you have to do, click on the OK options and then close this. So, you notice here is the showing a uh, red uh, crossed, simply means. The analysis is not done so come over to the 
model options and come to settings right there. Uncheck this use by somewhere for building analysis. Uncheck this. Right? Then get back to the analysis again. Let's try to run this analysis. Again. So the reason for that is due to the inclined uh, due to the inclined uh, slabs uh, stairway okay and as well as the steel uh, members so spy server is average issue understanding the matrix calculation systems successfully so now we have this okay this is now depending on the slopey slabs right there So now, video analysis is successful. You can see the latest story draft satisfies the limit. Everything is fine now. Click on the those options and close this as well. So you can now close this and check the analytical model. So here is the analytical model. So you see these provisions where I applied an additional load. You can see the loadings right there on the slabs. So you can see everything. It's fine just like this all right so you can get the displacement as well as the moment with the bend moment right there just like this let's get back to the physical model here is the physical model at this point you can design this structural members the columns the beams as well as the slabs successfully so to design this column select this columns right click ROC columns slash wall is for all the columns in the structure ROC columns slash wall active story is just for the story one so we use these options so all of this have not been designed that is why you are seeing it having a red cross sign in the design statute columns right there expand this We're using the columns design patch mode options click right there and then we select all bars click on calculate So we are having total number 57 uh, columns with structures to be designed which is successful now click on the close options to have all of these columns designed successfully so you can see your euro ratio is within very small okay which is less than one and everything is fine at this u ratios uh, percentage so we click on the Close to close this dialog, we'll be designing the beams, select the beam, options, and then ROC beam design, bash mode, we select all bar calculate. Alright, click on the close options, all the beams have been designed successfully, click the entire two designs. The beams you have all of their beams just like this so what you need to do here you have to now have a time to actually edit your beams successfully okay interact with your beams to make it presentable once drawing is ready okay so click on the close options you are done with the design of the structural members for the slabs let's look at the first floor slab navigate to the plan view of the first floor slab just like this so it's all about running the slab strips okay successfully so you can always navigate to the modeling see slab strips so we on that we are using analytical uh, strips okay so we have a limit uh, statute or conditions Okay, here yeah. at start at end. So it depends on where you are starting the strips and where you are ending it. So the first option is you are starting inside slab. You can also end inside slab, slab starting outside or external uh, outside of the wall. You can also end it and here is cantilever. So at first we will be considering starting outside, which is here. I will end it outside, which is inside the stair rooms. Okay so outside and then we end it outside as well you pick the first point 
But before then, you have to change your direction. In this case, we are going in the X directions, which is the horizontal direction. Hold the control key to have a straight line, just like this. Click to insert the slabs successfully. Slabs uh, reinforcement successfully, just like this. You can see. So, for these two panels, you are going to start it inside the slab and end it outside. So, you start it somewhere here. Move your hand to this point, click the inside out successfully. So, for this one, we'll do it outside to outside like this. Inside that, you can see. So, we are done going in the we are done going in the uh, horizontal directions. We get to the vertical directions. So, we start outside and end inside slab inside the cantilever so you choose this option pick that you click to add this just like this all right so we proceed outside outside this time around we have a cantilever here so we start it uh, outside and end it inside cantilever so we pick this point Go all the way here click. so you can see slab uh, section is insufficient click on ok options this section is not sufficient right there so this section have to be increased successfully so let's proceed so this one is being placed successfully okay let's get in the x directions and see how we can place this slab right there in this uh, place the strips in this direction of this uh, slab so we can't take it to be uh, we start it inside slab and then end it at liver so we start here go this way and then click you see it's not sufficient click on most options meaning we need to increase the thickness of this slab so click on the close options so this is how to actually carry out strips slab strips and you're writing before concrete slab reinforcement successfully all right i haven't done this if we have to increase the thickness of this we we'll have to rerun analysis again so once you're having a sufficient slab thickness you have to increase the thickness and run the analysis again all right we get to the 3D. This point we are going to be designing the foundations of this structure. So for us to do that, we will navigate to the story zero. So we'll click on story zero. Then navigate to the plan view of that. Sorry, it's not where we are coming. Okay, at this point, we will design the from grid line three and grid line one as a as a rough on beam foundations, and then the rest of these ones will be part footings, or we can take some portions of this all around to be rough on beam. Then this side will be part footings successfully. Okay. So what do we do now is. Uh, we are at the foundation, so we click on the beam right there, and then we have the depth of the foundation to be 1.2, so we use a beam of 1,000, okay, which was, sorry, 1.1, 1,100, and then it's going to be 225 as the width, and we have to take from this point, to 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 this point this point that point and then we will have this just like this okay have this we are okay with this so the next thing is the slab that will be going to be on top which is going to serve as the raft slab right there so close this at first so for the slab click on that we will be using a slab thickness 200 
limiters and then come to load we are using lowered and then impose load just normal 1.5 kilonewton per square meters so over to the general tab to place this to work effectively and run at the edge of this beam successfully you need to know the relative level height so we have the depth of the foundation to be 1.2 so if we subtract 1.2 from 200 which is the thickness of the slab we will be having 900 okay so so 1.1 rather not 1.2 1.1 minus 200 millimeters the thickness of the slab you have 900 millimeters so you key in 900 millimeters here yeah? and we place the slab just like this so this is going to make it to be in line at the edge of this of the foundation beam so let's get to 3d and see what we have right here so you can now see what we have okay so this is showing as transparent as i said earlier i can go to build it set out come to layer and then scroll down to where i have slab right there so change this successfully click on the ok I will sell it slab just like this. So for the rest of the foundations, we will be considering part 14. So select the column slider, right click, and then insert part 14. Just like this. And this will bring up part 14 dialog. It's 1.8 by 1.8 right here. So everything has passed. You can see there. You can come to 3D and then be able to rotate it to see your design successfully which click on the ok options to have that placed presented here we go by this 1.3 by 1.3 ok options over to this this seems to be close so you can do it as a combined footings so you see the combine insert combine part footings so you have this 1.6.2 meters click on the ok options just like this okay for this one it's a part footing as well ok options all right do the same thing here we insert the part footings okay Alright, so we are done with the foundation design. Okay, so I will complete the foundation design. This we required a foundation design using finite element to design this slab. This is a raft on beam. Okay, this is what you are seeing, raft on beam. Foundation, so to design the reinforced concrete slab right here, you will use a fine element method. So well, we can do that. Let's navigate to that level. So once you have something like this, you can always get everything back by using that method. Over to this place, right click, and then get to the plan view. So here we are going to draw, we are going to be drawing slab strips for the finite element first. So that we can be able to generate reinforcement for this. So you get to modeling slab strip right here. See in this option type, select there, come to FE strips. Okay, you can use these two options, come to FE right there. This is the one we are to be using. This first two options, so you select that options, and then we have already come into general and take it to you know port bulb so you can pick this point, the control key, and then pick this point. So this will help us to draw a slab strips just like this in the x directions. So then select the y directions and do the same. All right. So after we've done that successfully, what we next we do is to run analysis. Come to analysis tab. See F. 
e raft foundation uh, is click on that so at this provisions what you have to check includes color sections for fe you can add that you can remove that so it depends on what you want to do so it's click on raft foundation match and analysis So here we go, we have this, so we can come over to here, use Android, and we click on the generate match, so this is going to generate the match, just like this. So the process of design, I've started, close this, as this will take us to the post analysis processes and to reports tab. So you see, story analysis, design successfully, analysis completed, so, rather. Click on this analysis post processing. So here we now have to see the behavior of the slab, right? As due to the no compressions, so you just have to activate your contour first. So with this contour, you can actually read it to to read one or two stops successfully. So click on the MX moment. So moment in the local axis. Alright, so area of steel required. You have to also select that. If you are checking here, you see our 1073 as the area of steel at the critical uh, region. That is bottom. One bottom and two. Okay, so top. Okay, so having checked that, you can also check the soil pressure. Select that and bring your cursor closer to this. See, everything is showing okay here. Yeah. If it is showing warning, you should know that something is wrong with the soil. Alright. Okay, at this point, you just have to click on the close right there. Click on here is to transfer slab strips FE analysis results successfully. So after which we have to transfer foundation beam result. So click on that to have that transfer successfully. So we also say wall and color result successfully, and then click on the closed options right here. So at this point, we have to click on the update rebars to generate rebars for this slab successfully. Click right there, so you can now see rebars have been generated. So these rebars have been generated for top and bottom successfully. So this is how you design using a finite element analysis for raft and beam foundations. Okay, so just as I've said earlier, please like the video and subscribe to our channel. That is the only way you are helping us. Please do so. Thank you. And if you need an in-depth knowledge of polar structure, I will ask you to enroll our training with us and we will train you to the advanced user's level of protein structure successfully. Okay. So at this point we are done. What we do now, let's navigate to the 3D. We are done with everything design of these members we will proceed to sending this to Prota details or our detail drawing successfully so click on the save option so after saving this project you can now navigate to design the Beams, you know, we have not designed the foundation beams, so we are will see foundation beam to design. You have to come to design options and then you have a foundation beam. Click on that, you can see these bonds are the foundation beams. It's not being designed, use beam design dash more. We select all by calculate right there. So click on close. You see, it's now designed successfully. Everything is fine now. We should check the interactive design. It's telling us that bars are not fit. So, what does that mean? We are having to do five. 
read by 1100 what you need to do here is to increase the 2 to 5 sections how do you do that come to build right here so you are having these beams just like this so increasing this now you come over to where you have 2 to 5 we used to 50 by 250 just like this after which click on the pay bars and see it okay so the bars are now still fit in right so this is how you can be able to keep you know editing this successfully so you are supposed to increase this in accordance with the columns sections all right so you can see from the top you are having this so these are the changes you should be able to do to actually makes everything to be fine successfully so this is this showing a red cross because of this uh, bars do not fit in the cross sections these two right there so i believe everything is reset now with these sections okay the only the options so you have it passed successfully so that is how you can resolve that issue successfully click on closed options So to produce the drawings right here, you can just come over to drawings and report, click on the total details. Then yes, option to save the project. so here is put a detail so we want to go to auto generate details options click right there so you pick draw option then click anywhere on this scene environment give the program some time to process and run all the reinforced concrete members details trains right here All the drawings has been done so here are the beams you see and as well as the columns the foundations all right so we'll be taking this to AutoCAD exporting it to the AutoCAD here are the footings okay and the bar bending schedule successfully so taking this to AutoCAD now you come over to export DWG DSM I believe click on the export so we seven this and drawing one click on export Alright, so here is the drawing, so you just have to select that, double click on it to open it in AutoCAD, continue opening the WG file options, so there is the drawings, okay, so for you to now start editing of your structural design drawings, I will advise you to use a template called IC Protect Template, Company Templates, so successfully. So here in this template, you will find some sample of work done on tile foundations. So, sample of work done on tiles and foundations is IC Protect Engineering Limited, all right, of this template. So this template has been configured to help and ease your working process and addictions of your structural drawings. So you have some, you know, beams, these are wrapped on beams been done you have it strips you can see this is uh, ribs slabs designs 
you can see that beam right if you come over here it's a, some also sample of chalk that's been done so you can't always make use of any items here to make sure you fast track to your work okay and also was the bring your drawing in this template is being configured in such a way that it make a severe changes to your drawing so for instance a you see this beam the way it is now and the color everything let's see select it now for example we copy this to this template you see what will happen to this beam I click and press so you can now see click now you see notice that uh, the reverse is being you know increased and now visible than when it is in this place look at the way it is here right the way it is here come to put it you can see the way it now is so these are the some of the work that automatically this template will do to your drawings so what you will need to do is to get this template the link for this uh, template will be in the description of this video so get it and then use it to fast track your editing work so we are supposed to copy all of this to the template so you right click and click on the select options copy options just like this and then get back to the template then you paste so paste into clipboard click on paste so you can see the drawing is right there so you click I actually paste all of the drawing. You can see the changes that this template has made to these drawings. You can now see if you check the difference between this, check the difference between this and this. You see, so get this template and fast track to edit it. Uh, work in AutoCAD successfully. So with this, you now start to edit your foundations, your columns, your beams. You can, you can just copy any of these columns just like this that I've already edited. Okay. Then you just change one or two things and use it to serve as your column. Maybe change the height and change the rebars. Make sure that they are well labeled accordingly. Alright. So that is how you carry out the step by step uh, structural design using Potter structure and as well Potter steel and also using Potter company detailing template to start editing your work successfully so we bring the lesson to a stop here don't forget to like please don't also forget to subscribe stay tuned stay connected so that once we upload a new video you will be alerted once again thank you stay safe bye for now